Hello everybody, welcome to Fruitful Trees. Today I'm in Lockahatchee, but I'm at a farm called Lockahatchee Tree. And this is uh, Sarah and Chris's farm here. They have a wonderful personal collection, but they also have a great nursery with a whole bunch of exotic things that are really hard to find. And by appointment only, I'm gonna put the link below the video. This farm was amazing. I love everything they have, and you're gonna love it too. So let's check it out right now. And Hello everybody, here we are with Chris and Sarah, and they have a farm here out in Lockahatchee. And they also have a nursery, and they called it what? The Loxahatchee. Loxahatchee Nursery. <laughs> okay, very cool, very cool. And uh, how many? Uh, how much land do you have here? Just about an uh, acre and a half. Acre and a half. Okay. And how long have you been growing uh, fruit trees? Um, for about well, at our other house, we grew lychee yes. and longan. So that's been like seven, Mango, eight bananas, years. Papaya. Yeah, papaya. yeah, we've been doing it for a while. Okay. And what got you into planning? Uh, we got serious uh, once the uh, pandemic hit. So then we started trying to figure out what can we grow that's sustainable and lasts year long in Florida. And that's the hard part in Florida because of the weather and everything. So we started looking up, researching, found tropical vegetables, perennials do the best in Florida. So that's what we started doing our ground covers with. And then we outgrew our space in, in Lake Worth. We had a little a little lot in Lake Worth and we kept planting and planting and planting until we had no more room. So we had to move out here and uh, now we're able to expand and, and grow almost whatever we want, which is really nice. Oh, great. Yeah. And a lot of our older trees are from the other house. We dug them up and actually transplanted them over here. Oh, great. We can talk about that. Where in Lake Worth were you? Uh, we were out in West Lake Worth off Lantana Road um, near 441. Okay, but yeah. I'm in Lake Worth. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm in uh, the corridor. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Wonderful. Very cool. All right. So uh, I see right now, so you're in this land, and you were saying when it rains, sometimes you do get some flooding here? Not much out in the front yard. Usually it's in the back where all the house properties meet together and kind of make like a little culvert area. So when it, when it rains for like two weeks or three weeks, and then we have a heavy rain, it'll flood in the back a little bit. Now, before we get started with the tour, I always ask when I come to a, a plant lovers and tree lovers, there's so much empty room here. Is this like future plans or is this like just the way it looks? Well, this is, we were thinking about putting a little like farm shack over there and moving that tree. We love the tree, but um, during the winds, high winds and stuff like that, it breaks real easy. I think that's his defense, like to stay upright. And recently we had a 30 foot branch come off that tree during a high windstorm, kind of fell over by our fruit trees over in the over that area it kind of scared us thinking it was going to break the fruit trees and stuff so we're actually thinking about taking that out even though i really love it any plans to plant over here at all we're thinking about expanding the nursery out front and then adding a fence all the way around the front of the property okay. so that's why we kind of kept it open plus we like we have two young kids that we like they like to play soccer and play out here with their stuff so we keep some of the areas open for them how thoughtful that's great <laughs> <laughs> i mean i want to plant there but it's, it's, it's one, one way it's one way to help them embrace what we're doing though is them knowing that we're leaving space for them like i said at La in lake worth when we took over almost all of the property they kind of began to resent all of the planting so this way we found that while we're here now with all of this space, they've, they've begun to embrace it. I'm guilty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so show us the front. You want to show us the front or inside first? Oh, up to we you. We can start at the front. Actually, the entrance, we have um, kind of trying to plant everything that we, you could eat. Everything you could eat. That's the way to do it. All right. So. And we figure, why grow something if you are not if you can't eat it? <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> so out front here, um, we're having problems with the, this culvert where the dirt kept leaving with erosion. So these are actually natal plums and they have thorns on them so we kind of kept them away from everything so I figured it's a good spot to plant them without running into them all the time. But we wanted to use their root system to hold the soil in place so it wouldn't go eroding away into the culvert. Yeah. This is lemongrass. Very cool. Kinda, I love the way it smells. It smells so great. Like a, all right. right. And wonderful. actually underneath it, there's even some cranberry hibiscus starting to grow. Oh, look at that. Oh, very so cool. That'll look pretty when the reds pop up yes. through the bright yes. greens on and both sides. kind of match the other side. Oh, that's very kind of aesthetic. Of that's yeah. nice. <laughs> but uh, this plant hasn't fruit fruited yet, but I think it's pretty close. So what fruit's on there? It gets like a red plum. It's 
got, um, it's actually pretty good. Some of the varieties at uh, Eco Farms or Eco, what's it, Eco Farms? Yes. They grow a variety that tastes really good. Some of the varieties have too much latex in it when you eat it. It's kind of the latex spills out and stuff, but it's actually pretty good. Yeah, we're excited to see what this one is. That's yeah. the natal plum. Wonderful. And more about grass. Okay. So I guess we start in this little area. Yes. This is a small sapodilla. Yes, is that a salus wood or what? Yeah, it's a salus wood. Alrighty. I actually went to a property where the original salus wood tree was. Oh. It's got yes. flowers on it still, even though it yeah, has a bunch of fruit on it. Have you nice. tasted it yet? I haven't tasted this variety yet. Yeah, it's delicious. So All right. I'm excited to. Okay. Nice. Salus wood, okay. We planted a bunch of potato mint, the African potato mint. At, um, as a ground cover around a lot of these plants and they're doing sure. really well. So we're excited about that. We'll have a great harvest this year. There's some here and then throughout the property where you'll see the African potato mint. It's also a great pollinator, which surprised us, but the bees love it. That's wonderful. And I see a beautiful star apple here. Yeah, that's a green uh, star apple. It's crafted. Just green or any particular name variety? No, it's, it's just a green. All right, right. that's but, a beautiful- But it is grafted. Beautiful spot for that. And uh, what do we have here? Uh, this was a uh, Catalina avocado. avocado. Okay. It was a seven gallon, but we had it another spot and we decided it wasn't doing that well, so we moved it to a more drier location. Wonderful. I tasted it recently for the first time. It's excellent. Excellent. Okay. Uh, and I don't see any water here. Do you hand water or what do you do? You let nature water uh, actually, it? Actually, this one, this one has um, drip lines. I, I uh, installed all drip lines all through, mostly throughout the property. You okay. see it here, coming up. Okay, so there is three more. Okay. Yeah, it's just it runs under the ground. Very good, very and good. Pipes whenever we can. And this uh, potato mint actually makes a nice little potato that tastes just like potato when you cook it. It's amazing. Really? Wow. Yeah, we can actually dig one up. Do the leaves too. taste like mint or smell like mint? No, the leaves aren't that great actually, but let's see if we can find a potato. The potato leaves are edible, right? They are, yeah. Right. We just... Here you go. Here you can see these little potatoes. Oh, wow. They're excellent breakfast that. potatoes. They're delicious. Yeah, we'll That's save that. Right. You could just, you know, harvest, you know, three fourths of it and take the rest of the little potatoes and stick them back in there, and they'll grow just like that again. Yeah, so you can also take nice like this stem broke off, so then we that, dig, put it back in the ground, and you start a whole other plant with more potato, which is nice. Oh wow! Very yeah, easy. To so it. now I see from uh, this Catalina avocado to that star apple, how many feet is between there? Do you think? Oh, I would say only ten at the most. Did you Eight, plant nine. that on purpose, or you just like the way the spots work? No, I'll, we're we're not going to follow the rules. Um, fruit trees don't follow the rules in, in the in the wild either. You know, we, sure. I visit a lot of places down south that like old groves that are in like big cypress and the Fakahatchee Strand, and and they just grow wild and, and thrive like citrus in Florida with no diseases, nothing. Sure. So we we kind of we're going for that kind of like. Wild look. Dynamic, <laughs> wild look, you know, together. Sure. How long have you been at this property? This is only a year and, year and a half. Year and a half. Okay. And, and we what, did all what, this in a year. What and mango half. tree is this? Mahashanook. Mahashanook. This all was right. actually at our other house. You, okay. How big was it when you dug it up and moved it? Uh, it was pretty big. I mean, you see it now. It was maybe eight feet. Have you uh, got any fruit off it at your other house? We have. The other house, I think there were two or three on it. And then um, here there's been maybe up to five. But no, it was 20 on this. 20? But, oh, well, the but squirrels. the storms and squirrels and the took squirrels it all. Got it yet, so. Amazing tree. I actually uh, letting it grow a little bit. I cut a little bit of it to, you know, keep it low. Sure. Next year, once it fruits and everything, I want to cut it down and keep it low. I want it about that height. And that's about it. Sure. If I can. Okay. <laughs> Is that a fruit tree over there or just a native tree? That one? Yeah. Yeah, that's a strawberry, Jamaican strawberry tree. Yeah, that's pretty tall. Wow. Yeah. Jamaican actually, strawberry tree. And it continues to throw out runners everywhere. So we're starting to wonder if we need to move that away from the house. Yeah, mm -hmm. this, this tree has potential of being evasive in Florida. So I, I think people should know that before they plant this tree. Is we plant, I'll show you. Come well, from what I hear is after seven years, they die. That's right. But yeah. they have runners and I don't think those die with that. Uh, okay. Well, I left this runner actually over here so you could see it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, this is 
see how big this is only less than a year this tree wow and, and actually and it grew from, it from seed. seed so wow. you really got to watch when you plant these this is a red variety but see they'll shoot out runners and this is a runner it'll pop up but these things could go 50 to 100 feet out and start putting and when you cut the tree down it'll still grow wow yeah so you, you really got to watch you know it, it can be a potential invasive in Florida. Good tip, good tip. And I see some edible greens right here. Yeah, this is sort of the kids herb garden that they're working on. There's, they have actually a few basil and spinach that they want to plant, but there's out here basil, spinach, um, some onions with chives, mint. Um, and then this is the- Sisu, this is sisu. Sisu and the edible pepper leaf, which we only just recently got. So um, it's kind of a new one, a new interesting one for us and some Variegated society garlic. Okay, and the rest of your front yard on this side, at least, is completely empty right now. Yeah, we're not growing. We, when I would drive, I drive around our septic tank, or our septic tank has some fish in the middle. Okay. Here, and then the leach is out this way, so you don't really want to grow in your septic area. Sure. So I drive all along here, but eventually we plan on putting a fence in the front and grow more trees here, but we haven't got that far yet. But if we have like farm stuff that we want to drop off in the back, we will take it with the truck this way around the septic. So we're kind of leaving this open, partly for aesthetic reasons. In my little yard, my septic tank's in the back and I put uh, uh, raised beds over it. Oh, that's yeah, clever. So, yeah, that's a great I, idea. I have very limited space. So. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yes. Yeah. So very good. And then I see some bananas right in the front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are truly tiny bananas. We're trying to see if we could grow these. They're, they're actually, they grow about, they'll start fruiting about that size, which is a little higher than we wanted. So we might end up moving this banana away from our door. But we yeah. have gotten to an enjoy a rack from there already. Yeah. So that was exciting. Nice. We have figs, cranberry hibiscus, and then we use sweet potato leaves as a ground cover. We have many varieties of them. It's one of our favorite ground covers, um, but with all the rain we got from all the recent storms, it's kind of taken them out. So we're starting fresh again, but you'll see them as, as a we ground cover. We have different cover varieties. Over. You know, this is a green variety. Okay. Yeah. And now we go to the back of your Wonderful place here. Yeah, on the side is a bunch of stuff here. So that's a native, what, pine? Uh, that's a cypress tree. There's cypress. actually two different kinds. Most people don't realize that in Florida. Um, there's a bald cypress and a pond cypress. This one in the front is a pond cypress. Now, do you have plans to leave that here or no? I, we're probably going to take out this one, the pond cypress. Okay. Um, but the other one will leave. Just because we're, oh, we're leaving it right now for the two, shade, because okay. yeah. we're, we're, we're all our little trees are need a little bit of shade. So okay, so show here. us what trees you have here in this little area. All right, we can start over here. This is a mar market pumpkin, avocado. Okay, it's real small, but have you tasted that? Yeah, we really like it. It's delicious. It, it, it seems to hold well in the uh, refrigerator too. Like we kept it in the refrigerator and it stayed. Good for three, four days, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really without good. turning brown. It was amazing. Um, this is an anthemoya. It's one of my favorite. Probably on my top 10 favorite fruit trees. This one I bought as a Lisa, but it ended up being a Geffner. Oh, really? So, have you tasted the Geffner? Yes, I have. Love I, it? I have a huge, I have a couple of Geffners. Love them? Love Delicious. them. Great. Favorite. Probably top 10 <laughs> for easy, easy. Good. Beautiful tree. Um, this is a. Uh, Believe it or not, this is a mango that the people that we bought the house for kept it in a pot. This is probably, this mango is probably 12 years old. It was a bonsai because it was kept in a small wow. pot. And then when we moved in, I noticed it bloomed and it was only this tall in the pot. And it produced this like kidney shaped purple mango. Wow. It was interesting. Delicious. Was it from a seed originally? A seedling. Wow. So I figured let's put it out. Side, and now it's thriving and I haven't cut it back much I cut some of it you can see when, when you cut mangoes usually when you, you cut mangoes it'll how'd it taste there. delicious delicious stop I'm thinking, actually thinking about naming start thinking one. some names <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. purple rain yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's great wow yeah, that's great. but this one's definitely a winner I think all righty yeah. and this is a we do a lot of compost too, like with our scraps and stuff. So this is a volunteer uh, anthemoya too. Oh, nice! So we just left it there. <laughs> Very nice. And uh, we're actually starting. Uh, we do our 
northern vegetable gardens out front because the chickens will tear it up in the back. So this is the time of year you want to do all your northern vegetables. That's what we do in the front here. We left this space for doing that kind of stuff like kale and broccoli and stuff you can't Tomatoes. grow in the summer. There's some great radish growing over there. Now, do you, do you like have radish? Any yeah, I love radish. Okay, we'll get you some. Do you have any issues here with, uh, with pest? Um, well, well, we have a few squirrels. Squirrels come out <laughs> because they like to eat the nuts off the cypress trees. Okay. So it's a, a battle with them eating our little saplings or seeds that you want to grow. So yeah. a lot of stuff we keep protected in the small shade. If it really so. counts, we keep it in there. But um, they have come and dug up quite a bit of the seeds that we've planted, which is rather frustrating. But um, yeah, this year we finally learned to lay the drip line down first and then plant our seeds below each drip. So now we know everything's getting perfectly watered. So now you can see that there's a lot of drip lines and rows. And we also know that whatever's growing under the drip is not likely a weed, which is helpful too. Very good. Very yeah, good. These are all turmeric. We, we grow a lot of turmeric um, wow. and then we enjoy harvesting it. And then of course, because there's so much of it, we recently um, purchased a freeze dryer. So we freeze dry nice. those. Yeah. Nice. So a lot of our stuff, we end up freeze drying. So we have loads and loads of freeze dried turmeric which also grounds down to a powder quite yes, nicely amazing. put it in tea and then it's like having fresh turmeric in your tea which is amazing wonderful yeah, yeah. or pretty much everything we cook we add turmeric to it mm -hmm. okay i'm trying not to step on your step oh, oh it's okay, okay. <laughs> It'll what do we got here this is actually we had a i had a julie tree at our other house and we tried to move it and it was the only tree that actually died but i kept saplings from this tree so I really enjoyed it. So I started just to grow them out and they're doing wonderful, you know? So this is again, one of those things I'm gonna leave, leave it get a little bit higher and I'm gonna cut it, see if it fruits. It's so which tree out. was this? Was this a seedling? This is a sap, yeah, seedling of a, a Julie. Okay. I'm trying it out if it's, if it's not gonna hurt us. If it, if it turns out terrible, we'll just cut it down. Or top work it, yeah. Yeah, or something like that. Okay. Um, is there more to the front there or? Yes. Yeah, there's more of that. <laughs> Wonderful. This is a cassava, which is excellent. I think everybody should grow cassava at their house. It's no work to do this. You, when you harvest it, the only, the only hard, hard work is harvesting it. But then you gotta and harvest even that, anything. It's not really hard work. Yeah, it's right? not really that hard. Do you like cassava? I haven't had it actually. Oh, okay. We'll pull you up some today so you can see. You it's have to cook quick, that, right? Easy. Yes. You know? yep. Yeah. Okay. But it's low maintenance. You don't have to do nothing to it. It's one of those. Through uh, food crops that you just grow and just leave it there and don't worry about it. Yeah, nice. it's amazing. Amazing. Right. And then we have great neighbors who gave us a wonderful family recipe for cooking cassava. We'll share that with you too. All right. <laughs> so these are all ro rows right here, wherever the drip line is. Oops. Got some onion growing there. We have Arcadia broccoli over there. Sweet potatoes are coming back in again for a great ground cover. Yep. This is a bigger chard. cassava. This is a, a Suriname cherry, a black Suriname cherry. Okay. Well, I should just call it a dark Suriname cherry. It's a little different. It's delicious um, though. The cherries people are sell things. Suriname cherries that they say they're black, and they're not the true black Suriname cherries. You'll find that out if you grow a lot of yep. them. Yep. There's flowers on this one. Nice. Starting. So, the sour sop, you let it grow. Oh, okay. From a seed? Yes. Okay. Yeah, again, just popping up some compost. We get a lot of our little trees that way. This is governor plum. I don't see many people growing this. So it's kind of neat. We, we've seen flowers on it. It does have thorns and stuff. So it's kind of nice. neat to have. And this is strawberry guava. Very nice. This is a um, Taiwan. Uh, how do you say it? Taiwanese. Taiwanese guava. So we're trying to grow different kinds of guavas. Sure. They produce a lot of food. That Taiwanese um, guava is amazing. It's a huge guava. It's white on the inside and it's very crispy. It's like eating an apple, like a green apple. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Nice variety. Yeah, that's great. What do you yeah. got here? So that's Which a strawberry one? guava. Strawberry, strawberry guava. guava, another guava. Yeah, okay. and here we're growing peppers. We've got romaine growing around that hill there. That's around the fruit tree. It's a great place to grow root vegetables because you're watering the fruit tree anyway. And then there's We've added so much soil just to raise them up above the flood line. So in there, we've got beets growing. Okay. Yeah. This is a white potato. So this is the reason why we're keeping the cypress trees too, for some shade. 
Do you know what variety that is? Uh, Denzer, I believe. Denzer, okay. Yeah. So I'm excited. I mean, if anybody's ever tried white sapote, oh. it's amazing. My it might be my favorite it's, fruit. It's probably yes. one of the yes. my favorites, yeah. too. I have like five varieties. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you do? Yeah. That's We're growing a bunch of pigeon peas, too. These are great nitrogen oh, nice. fixers. Yes. Yeah. Nice. They provide a ton of food. Um, you can eat pigeon peas raw and fresh, or you can dry them and cook them. Um, so they're delicious. There's some plunge on there if you want to try some. Welcome to it. Do you like pigeon peas? Sure, yeah. Fresh? I haven't had them raw. Oh, yeah, try them. Oh, there's some. All right. Okay. We're starting you a basket, so if you want to throw it in oh, there. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'll throw one in there and I'll eat one. <laughs> I'll get you some more. You eat okay. those. All right, so. Uh, this is more cassava. Actually, we grow it like everywhere because it's definitely, it'll produce so much food under the ground. Oh, yeah, let's find one we can pull up and then we can send them home with some cassava for dinner, too. Want to do this one over here that's laying down? And you can get that? That's great. When you get yeah. cassava root. So, this, this is the true black Suriname cherry. This one, it looks different. If you look at that one over there, how it's darker green, and you look at this one, it's got different kind of like shape to it. This makes amazing Suriname cherries. This is one I'm going to be grafting onto Suriname cherries. Amazing one. We passed this tree. Oh, this is um, cotton candy. Mango. Cotton candy mango? Yep. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to taste that one. Very nice. I've had it. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a late season. Yeah, great late season. Oh, oh, wow. oh let's see if we're going to get it up. <laughs> oh, we will. We're oh, no. around here. Cassava tree. And it makes these amazing fruits. Well, this one's going to be smaller. Oh, look at those. Wow. It's a smaller one, but then they're more tender, which is nice. They don't have like they a grow much core. bigger than that? Yes. They can. Yeah. <laughs> you want to get them before the core gets too woody, or at least we like to. So this is a great one. And then... I mean, just even that small... Yeah, that's enough for one dinner. More than that, I And think. how often before you uh, pull it out? Well, we'll let them grow. Like, they could get really big. Some of them say medium size, but you see those over there. Those are cassava. Too. But maybe four months, right? We've Four to six months we've pulled them up. Yeah. So they'll grow back in about four to these. six months well, from, from scratch, from start? Yeah, pretty much. Once you do, it's really easy to propagate. You just cut the piece off and stick it in the ground. Yep. So those are the kinds of, um, you know, food that we like to grow. Stuff you don't really it takes effort to grow. You just cut that up and stick it right cut back. Cut that in into the pieces, pieces. Stick them back, stick them back into the back ground. In the ground wow. and it'll grow, like, just like you can the put other these one. back in the ground. They'll grow. We can cut this here, here, and stick that back in the ground and grow. So that's what, actually everything along this fence line here came from sticks from one that we had growing in the back. Do they need a lot so, of water? Uh, we don't. No, have, we, we don't, don't do it over here. This, this gets a, some water from the two properties. It's kind of like the lower part of the both properties. So. Okay. Um, this is actually. Uh, Thank you. This yeah, is uh, okra from last year's. It just grew the seed back. Came back. The seed came back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And there's another right. one somewhere. Oh, there's one here. There's one there. One there. That's kind of, it's kind of cool to have something like that. Yeah, we also, great to grow in Florida. We have these um, bush long beans that are also coming back same way. They came back from seed from last year, which was nice. This is a sweet tamarind. Sweet tamarind, okay. It's a beautiful tree. It really is. It's, pretty. it's flowered quite a bit, but we haven't gotten fruit yet. More pigeon peas. Pigeon peas. They we're growing corn. Good. I like them. They look good. And then we have two mangoes out front. We're growing corn right now. <laughs> <laughs> Trying it. See what we could do. Um, this is actually coconut cream. It's real small. Okay. I'm not sure how that's going to do, but it seems to be pushing out. It should be doing fine. Mm -hmm. No reason why it wouldn't. That's a small um, pomegranate. Okay. It's got flowers on it. Real small. We used to have a couple of pomegranates at our other house, and we missed them these days. They grew it, tall and just they, they grew well. Tall. Oh, yeah, beautifully. I think it's a Florida pomegranate, it's yeah. meant to grow down here. And this mango is fruit punch. Nice, very nice. Yeah, well, that's the front yard. Very nice. Oh, and there's chickens in the front. Oh. This is why we have that fence. And there's their chickens. Now, do you eat the chickens? We have. Okay. Yeah. Generally, what we like to do, though, 
<laughs> we love their eggs and we love their company. Hey, hey, but but this is what happens if you leave them. Yes. Fresh dirt. Garden stuff in the well, uh, amongst the chickens, that we're going to go in the back. You want to go on this side or the other side? Um, it's up to you. Okay, no, it's fine. So, how many whole, chickens do you have? The whole area has three chickens. How many chickens do you have? One, I think we're down to 21 chickens 21? and two ducks. Okay. Interesting. So, now we're coming into their 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 backyard here, which uh, has a lot of trees here. So, we'll start off right here. I guess I see some more. Is that ginger or is that turmeric? That's, That's turmeric. turmeric. We have turmeric. ginger too. Okay, so what tree is that here? This is a persimmon, tropical persimmon. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm Where'd you get excited that? excited about it. I found that uh, actually at a nursery, well, the Caribbean market off of Okutu. Got you, got you. They had two trees. I should have bought the other one. I kicked myself in the butt for not buying yep, it. Yeah, <laughs> hard to find now. Yeah, yeah. it looks it's starting to get a little raggy, but that's a good No, they will in the winter. They'll lose yeah. all the leaves. But it's wonder. It's start. It, I had. I actually cut this. It was getting growing too much on this one branch. Yeah. So I wanted to just want to try to catch up. You know. Very nice. And we have pepper over here. Yep, some black pepper and some blue butterfly cake. Blue butterfly cake. Nice. We're hoping that it will spread all along the fence. It just hasn't yet. Now, is your irrigation done on a well? Yes. We we bypassed the softener. Okay. Because it has salt, you can't. So there's a bypass. Right there, right there, okay. Timer. And we also have a pond on the other side that we'll show you, and that pumps water to a lot of our fruit trees as well, which is great because it's um, it has a great fertilizer, right? It has fish in there, yeah. and turtles in there, so that's really one of the best fertilizers we have is that pond water. Nice. And what tree is this? This is a uh, uh, star fruit. Star fruit. This what was kind? actually at our other house. <laughs> we okay. transplanted it back here. Do you know here. what kind of star fruit? Uh, it's sure. Uh, uh, can't oh, Sri. Sri. Uh, Sri Lanka is it? It's something, something like that. Yeah. 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 It's actually really. This one's really good. It's really sweet. You like it. It's got fruit on it now. And what is this here? This is a sugar apple. Asian sugar apple. Wow. I, I I personally don't even like green sugar apples. I think they're kind of they don't taste that well. But Asian sure. sugar apples are superior. They taste amazing. There's so I have a bunch here. of these growing. And you can see the old one up there. But this is the time of year they uh, start to look bad. So I see something in the pot here. What's that in the pot? This is a yellow jabota kaba. Okay. It's wonderful. It's probably one of the best tasting fruits, but not enough pulp on the actual fruit itself. Sure, sure. <laughs> Some uh, red hibiscus. Yeah. And this is a grimmel. Cranberry hibiscus. The grimmel. Oh, grimmel. Jabota cava. Grimmel in the ground, okay. And these uh, hibiscus, they're all, they flower in the morning, but yep. they're still beautiful, beautiful looking. Beautiful, right? And edible, too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Tastes like lemon. And they this make is, a wonderful tea as well. This is my cocktail at the Moya. I bought this. At the Moya, no name, and it was so big, I was like, man, I gotta have this just in my yard. So it, it flowers, it's flowering actually right now, which is really wild. See it down here? Yeah. It, we're, we're past the season for. <laughs> yeah, wow. And did you put stuff on here? Yeah, Geffner, some cuttings of uh, Lisa. Um, I'm gonna just start patching. Keep all grafting. Time. So you can see the union graph here. Nice. Right here. Mostly on the ends right here. They've taken beautifully. Yep. That's great. And this is a um, Tierra of the Rio Grande, but it's a strange one because it produces small flowers and it's probably going to have small fruits. So I'm starting to think this might be a, a dwarf, um, uh, a dwarf kind of variety of Tierra of the Rio Grande. It's kind of interesting. This is, is a chabo right there. Yep. Yeah. This is is it's supposed to be sabra, but I think over the years people grow jabot cabas together. So it's, I'm thinking it's kind of like a hybrid, but it, it's it's producing like a sabra, but the but the bark on a tree looks nothing like sabra. And you've gotten fruit from it. Yeah. Here's a flower. Here. 
And this is probably 15 years old. Oh, God, yeah. Okay. See, there's a flower right there. See it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it was covered with fruit um, last year. And the year before, two years ago, it started fruiting. I'm going to take a tour of this one. Oh, you want to see my... Uh, Oh, well, I want to see everything. So let's, <laughs> let's, I guess, go to this area first. This is a Geffner. All right, you love Geffner. Yeah, we do. <laughs> That's great. You gotta grow the stuff you like, right? I know. Right? I feel exactly. like we should just have all Antoines and sugar and, apples. And they're amazing. I mean, really, really amazing tree. It looks ugly, but yeah, well, <laughs> it's amazing yeah, tree. That's great. And uh, what we did here is um, our property lines up with three different properties in the back, so all the runoffs in the house go to the edge of the properties. So we decided we're going to plant stuff that does well with water. So over here we have most of our bananas and then we have uh, sugarcane. I grow sugarcane. Oh, nice. And some elderberry down on the end because they like yeah, water too. Elderberry. So that's a dwarf namwa, which is an amazing tree. If you're going to buy a namwa, buy the dwarf one. Beautiful tree. And I just took a rack off that tree and I'll give you some fruit. Thank you. Right Did I get any taller than that? Uh, they can get a little bit taller than that, but they stay they stay pretty pretty low to the ground. I have nice. the regular enamels too, and it's over there. That's that's how big they get, <laughs> and yeah. it's got a big rack on it too. So, it's here. so this one's uh, I think uh, dwarf Brazilian. Uh, that's the regular enamel too. See, it's got a little rack on it. They get bigger than that. This is a uh, blue Java. It's got a rack on it there too. See it? Yeah. So the thing with uh, bananas, the best thing you could do is. Uh, Plant them by near water. Don't plant them in water. Plant them on the edge of water, which we did. We built up a little mound, as you'll see, around our property. Um, this is the lowest part of our property, so this is where it, the water sits. So I plant a little hill right there. That's um, Gross Michelle. That's the original banana we used to eat before it got destroyed. Um, so this is sugar cane, black sugar cane. Wow. We just passed all our sugar cane here. This is, uh, I have black, green, rainbow, red, <laughs> growing them all. What do you do with it? Do you we cut it, it up and, uh, you know, eat it. Eat it. This is red sugar cane. And recently we put our, we grow uh, dragon fruit, but we like to keep it away from everything because it'll, it'll attack you. You'll walk <laughs> by and they'll grab onto your shirt or something. So we kind of keep it to the back of the house. Awesome. We grew this one from seed. This was our first one. Oh, first wow. one. We had it at our other house. It? Yeah. Uh, well, actually, this it flowered last year, and this year we finally got fruit. It, it, it set. Uh, that one are cuttings. So that one fruited. Every time it blooms, that, that one fruits, sets fruit. We just made that one. That's the yellow one, and the other one's uh, red. And how old are your posts? Posts? Yeah, well, that's eight years. <laughs> it still last eight years. Yeah. Or more. Is it eight years? It's eight years. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is a yellow one, so we're kind of excited, but it grows crazy. This yeah. one <laughs> took eight years to get kind of like that, and this one took like half a year. Wow. Yeah. So we keep every all those away from the house. And this is our regular Nam wall, which oh. I bought as a praying hands. There you go. <laughs> but we're happy actually. But it's actually a better taste. Much better. Yeah, and then praying hands don't work as well for us because once you start feeling them, you have to eat so many bananas at once. So um, we're happier with this actually. Now, so, do you cut the stalks after you take the rock down? Yes. Yeah, we do. We use them for compost. They're excellent. Um, they're an excellent source of compost, an excellent source of um, water. So we do love chopping up. This is actually our compost area too. Every day we bring the chickens about five gallons of food scraps from the cafeteria at school and we dump it here for them. You can see they've already devoured it. They devour it as soon oh, as it wow. comes. They love it. Um, that also helps us with creating soldier fly larvae. The chickens love eating that and it also makes great fertilizer for so our So that's great. Plants. So you, are, you, you work at a school and the cafeteria gives you their food scraps. They and do. instead of throwing them away, you use them as compost and chicken food. That's yeah. exactly right. Wonderful. So we take all of the fresh vegetable and fruit food scraps from them. Um, and then we also, we learned that it's better to keep those things out of the landfill. I think a lot of people think that that stuff is going to biodegrade, but actually through research, we found that it doesn't because of the lining at the bottom of the landfill, um, those things turn more into something like that's like a concrete and 
um, fruits and vegetables don't always biodegrade in the landfill. So we feel like we're also helping out with, you know, reducing that carbon footprint. Interesting. Okay. So this part of the Durin Eing was about a foot and a half water. In this oh, wow. We paddleboarded and kayaked all through the backyard. Wow. We actually even rescued um, a rack of bananas on the paddleboard during that storm. Wow. And before we planted all this, you can see how it's raised up. We raised up the ground about a foot because we knew it was going to be wet. So we wanted to at least have the roots breathe if it's in water. You know? Sure. This is our true strategy. strategy of, uh, this is my, one of my favorite trees I wanted to grow, but it died. What was it? Uh, Rolinia deliciosa, okay. flowering. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so. We can take a look at some of the plants over here. I want so you have two uh, pines here. Are you leaving those? These are uh, bald oh. cypress trees. Cypress. This is my favorite tree in Florida, native. It's amazing. These, these are the trees that grow along the Loxahatchee River. In so the I flood guess plains. that you love them, you're keeping them. Well, I was thinking about taking out the one on the side there, just because I want to open up that area. And yes. plus, they're growing, growing together. But these trees could, you know, last for thousands of years. It's an amazing tree, amazing tree. Let's keep walking around. You want to do the front? Sure, beautiful. Did you build that brick wall there? Was we did. Yep, and then we filled it in with soil too. Nice. We thought we would actually do all the gardening that we're doing in the front, all our vegetable gardening, we thought we would do here, like one giant raised bed, but the chickens loved it just as much as we did, so <laughs> we had to move it. We actually had a fence around it at one time, too, yeah. but it just, their wasn't way work, in. just wasn't working. <laughs> oh, drip line's on. So what's this here? This is a pink guava. It's pink actually guava. really, really, really good. Absolutely delicious. Oh, we delicious. have some freeze-dried for you, so you can try it later. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it produces so much fruit that we found that we either have to make a paste, make smoothies, or freeze dry them to keep up with it. Actually, it produced so much fruit last year during the drought we had that it actually looked like it was going to die. So I started taking fruit off the tree and letting all the branches, and now it's coming back. But you can see old, some of them I didn't take off up there. But it yeah. was just covered with fruit. Like I'm talking wow. 300, I don't know how many, how much fruit was on it. And, and then in that way, it actually didn't thrive. The fruit didn't taste no, that great. not big yeah. at all. And sort of on the dry side. So next time it does that, we're taking off like half of the fruit. <laughs> it's starting to fruit again, see? Yes. Nice. And it's, nice. it's up there. It's got some. All right. What do we have here? This is a Barbados cherry. Barbados cherry. Okay. Uh, we're actually thinking about taking it out. Because, um, I love it. I love Barbados cherries. They taste good. They have the most vitamin C, you know, and most of any of the fruits. But it's just taking up room, and I have so many of them. I'm starting to plant them in different areas. So this one's probably coming out. What's that right behind it? That's that's your favorite. Really? You don't know what that is? That is that jackfruit? Yeah, that's it's a jackfruit. jackfruit. Yes. <laughs> what kind of jackfruit is it? This is a. This was in our. This was 12 foot tall in our other house. We transplanted it back oh, here. Wow, you moved the jackfruit. Yeah. It moved okay. And it, and it survived. Yeah. Wow. And it's been, last year it produced tons of male flowers and starting to do fl flowers now, as you oh, can yeah, see. I see some flowers. There's some up there. So I think it's, it's we're going to pray that it, it holds this year. What is the seedling? Yes. Wow. I believe so. We found this in the um, nursery downtown. And they imported a lot of different trees from overseas, so I'm hoping this is a good variety that was the seedling. This right. is the red Turks cap hibiscus. Have you tasted say, this? No, it's they're so beautiful. sweet. <laughs> it's like, you have to take a bite here. Yeah. Like we eat that tip off there, super sweet. Wow, one of my favorites, right? Delicious. Yeah, you can just sit here munching the bottom. Right. And the leaves, you can eat the whole thing. Eat, all the leaves are edible. You can eat all of it. Yep. Yeah. Wow. You can eat all of it, but there's so many that <laughs> let me just. We're gonna bring the, the whole neighborhood over here to you know. Those are beautiful. Are the leaves edible as well or no? Oh, that's a good question. I'm, I'm not sure what the leaves are on that. this. Those are delicious. They're we have delicious. a pink variety over there. I think oh, the red one's sweeter, though. One. There's pink back there near the bananas. That's pretty wild. Oh, well, that's cool. And this reproduces easily by cutting as well, which is really nice. Wow. We actually clearly need to do some take cuttings. Take this off here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then you just sort of wobble it back and forth to get the green end off. There you go. There you got it. <laughs> That's great. Delicious, okay. right? And you got All some right, stuff we'll in your basket. Back there. Uh, I collect Jaboda Cabas. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. So these are all different varieties. Pretty big. So, um, let me walk up here. 
So this is a uh, Otto Anderson uh, Bacovino. It's a very, it's kind of a rare one. Not many people have them this high in Florida. Um, this is a big red. It's got fruit on it. I left some fruit for you, so if you want to try it. Big red jabo. Yeah, it's a wonderful tree. If, any, if you're going to grow a jabota cabra, if you only need one, buy a red. <laughs> so that's pretty big. Does it fruit a lot? Oh, this thing three times a year. There's a one there. Alrighty. And you can see all the see all the fruit forming. Yeah. All all up and down. I just got rid of all mine. <laughs> you got rid of all yours? I got one. I kept one, but I, I sold about 10 of them. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's a... Delicious. Beautiful tree. Did yours fruit? Yep. Yeah. I, I, I like them. I, I just think they're so cool. Such a cool tree. I like the fact that you have them in pots. That's nice. Well, you kind of want to keep them in pots because they're very acidic. So you can control the, the soil. You know, when you plant them in the ground, you got to worry about, you know. How long did it take to get this tall? Uh, I bought this I bought this when it was about four feet tall, maybe three years ago. Very nice. Beautiful tree. And that's another red one here, or? This is Paulista. This is a Paulista. very rare one. This takes about 15 years, just like the Sabras. See how it's got a curled leaf on it? Yeah. And it's starting to push out. It looks terrible now, but you can see like pushing out new leaves and beautiful foliage on it. And this, this is a different one. This is, I think, is trunk of flora because it's got different bark. It grows really fast. The leaves are slender and pointy. So if you look at this one, oops, <laughs> and you look at other ones, they're different. You know. Very different from the Sabra and everything. Well, I love the. This was sold. This was sold as a Sabra, but it's not. Oh, it was. Well, and you found out. Yes. <laughs> well, I looked at it. It's like that can't not be a Sabra, but I'll buy it because I, I collect them. So. <laughs> That's great. That's great. This is another red. Oh, wow. Well, fruit on there. Yeah. Well, well I'll save that fruit red. up there for you if you want it. <laughs> what is that? Oh. Right up there. Another big red. All right. Yeah. Enjoy. Well, love. This is. Great tasting fruit. You guys want to there too? See? Yeah, there's a bunch of them. Good? Oh, yeah. And uh, this tree is pretty much the same as the other tree I showed you, the Trunk of Flora. It has very skinny leaves. And it grows much faster. But it takes 15 years on the fruit. So this one actually needs to go into a bigger pot. Mm -hmm. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> and this is one of our favorites, the Abiyu. This oh, Abiyu wow. wow, produces so much fruit. This is one that wow. we had. Yeah, we had this at our other house in Lake Worth, and we dug it up and brought it here with us. We were so grateful that it survived because it's huge, delicious, and makes the most amazing fruit. Yeah, this is definitely top 10 oh. fruits for us. Wow. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I'd love to come back and film it when it's fruiting. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll give you some, too. You'll yeah. really love it. so amazing. I can't explain. That's great. That's going yeah. wonderful. That one Good. tastes like caramel apple. It has an amazing texture. Wow, that's great. And then you have another uh, jabo here. This is what I consider a true sabra. The way that the bark on the tree, it's got that red color. You know, it's got the small leaves. See, now look at the difference in the leaves on the yeah. trunk of Florida. Oh, yeah. Sabra will always have these tiny leaves. See the leaves? Yeah. There's no way that that's a Sabra. So. Yeah. And the way to tell if your tree's doing well with the Jabota Cabra is that they'll peel. You know they're growing. Oh, that's good All to know. All the way down, it's peeling. See it? So you I know it's I don't know how doing. well mine's doing, but so you say they like very acidic soil? Yeah, very acidic. You want to do peat moss and uh, perlite, mostly. Just mine's in the ground and my it neighbors does, thrive. My, neighbor, my neighbors are thriving. Yeah. Well, it's oh, a yeah. Sabra, right? Yeah, he lives right next to me. Well, I have two Sabras in the ground. Yeah, and... Sabra is the the one that's going to do best in the ground. That's why they always use the rootstock for grafting. Mm. Okay. Sabra. Very nice. But this is actually my first Zabacara. Wow. <laughs> I love this tree. It just looks nice. and Actually, when it's peeling now, it kind of looks a little different. But... That's great. Yeah. Right. Well, there's a big, big pond right there. And those are cypress trees, and then that's the maple. Is that a man-made pond? 
Yeah, usually in locks that hatch, they take that and fill it for the house foundation. The house yeah. yeah, but that, like I said, that's an excellent way to fertilize our plants is by using that pond water to water. So actually, Chris has been has worked really hard to create irrigation that comes from this pond. So we turn the pump on from the pond, and then it irrigates a lot of the fruit trees that we have on this half of the house. It's free fertilizer from the. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. So we have a coconut here. Yeah, we have two coconuts, one here, one over there. One's supposed to be green, yellow, one's yellow. One green, one yellow. <laughs> so this, this was a... And you got your house from Lake Worth with you right here. No, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we live shovel. in this. It's about it's that right. big in Lake Worth, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what do you got here? Uh, this is another one that died. Low from Hurricane Ian. Too much water. What was that? A loquat. A loquat, okay. Yeah, neither one of our low quats did well in that. This was one. a very tasty one, uh, Christmas. I love okay. this variety. I actually end up buying another one just to replace it, but it's not obviously not going to go in the same spot. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, this is did well. It's a guava. This is a pear guava. Mm -hmm. Okay. We haven't tried the fruit off of it yet, so I'm kind of excited to taste it. Yeah. Um, this is your favorite, one of your favorite trees. This one here <laughs> is a. Uh... It's a San Pablo. Seedling. Wow, wow. A seedling. Yeah. And you got that at Echo? Yep. It looks like. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. That that is uh yeah, that's in my probably top three. Oh nice. Yeah, so I'm excited to see how it turns out. Yes, yeah, nice. Over here we put in a lot of soil when we first moved in because we knew that there was the potential that this area could flood. So we filled it higher and you can see it's obviously become a lot more compact actually after the after Hurricane Ian. But um, this was one berm area we created in order to be able to lift our trees up a little higher than the rest of the land to help prevent flooding. It still did flood through here, but um, it drained out of here a lot quicker than the rest. And fortunately, almost everything survived. Mm -hmm. it, well, four days, three to four days with water. Well, so what do you have here? You have a mango here. Yeah, this is a, a special edition carry dwarf. <laughs> this is a dwarf carry. This thing produces. Like, Was it on crazy. a dwarf root stock or? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Very nice. It stays small. It's staying small. You know, I didn't cut it as much this year because I wanted to give it a little bit more. Sure. On it. Mm -hmm. Then what's that over there? This is a Huang Tong star fruit. Okay, yes. This thing is a overachiever. <laughs> this is amazing. Like that. Look at it. just on the one branch alone, and then this is a small tree and grafted. Look at right here. All, if you ever really wow. look, it's all fruit. The whole thing's fruit, and it's delicious. This and, fruit on here is so yeah. Good. And last year it was all the branches are hanging. I had to <laughs> pop them up. You know, I even took some fruit off of it. It was just so much fruit. It's an amazing tree. Mame. Oh yeah. One of many. We love mame. How many? So I haven't seen many yet. Everywhere. How many do you have? A lot. <laughs> I have a lot of mames. Yeah. Okay. I grow mames. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what kind of mame is that one? This one's a pace. A pace. Okay. Yeah. It's All a right. later bloomer than the, um, yes. I noticed in the, uh, we have a Excalibur over there. That one's already flowering and everything. Okay. Pace mame. Uh, this is a dwarf um, mamois. Another dwarf mamois. Back okay. here was flooded. Really oh, wow. Um, this is where all the pots are if everyone in town is looking for them. Shh, <laughs> wow. don't tell them where my stash is. Okay. Um, we have two mulberries back here. One's a Tice, and the other one's a white mulberry. And then plus we have um, ice cream, bean, ice cream bean, but we're moving these ice cream okay. beans. Are, we just pluck them here, but we eventually we have some butter. What's that tree with all no leaves on it? It's <laughs> peanut butter day. fruit tree, but it's still alive. Okay, did the water do that? Yep. Yes. Yep. This wow. area back kind of here sad was about it. Severely flooded. We also had a, a low clot back yeah, here. Yeah, there was a low clot right here. That low clot didn't make it, so we pulled it out. Oh, okay, and you got a yeah. uh, fig right here? Yep. yep, this is one of our figs. We have um, a wide variety of figs. We have turkey fig, black, um, black fig. <laughs> we have the um, Olympia. We have the Olympia. We have a couple of yeah. Is that another mame? It's another mame, yeah. Which one's that? That one is the Excalibur. This is a small okay. one. But it's got flowers on it. Look. 
Yeah. It's loaded with flowers. Yes. Uh, and this nice. is a custard apple I got oh, down in so Homestead. Nice. What kind do you know? No name. Where'd you get it? Uh, ready to grow. Okay. A nice nursery down there. I haven't heard that one. That's so no great. name on this custard apple. No. Surprise. But I'm sure it's I'm sure it's from Pine Island nursery and nice i'm sure it's a good variety so oh, we kept yeah. it. it it flowered uh first time this was actually planted in our other house too it flowered does uh, it lose its leaves in the uh, winter well it's starting to right now yeah yeah See? and uh and usually right. i kind of help it out a little bit too do you water right. that one a lot or you don't have to it's much. got drip all on it okay yeah. very nice and this is a sour sauce yes it is <laughs> got some flowers on oh, there yeah. too yeah we're hoping Seedling it'll fruit soon. Seedling. Okay. Um, it's it's this is just started flowering this year. One flower or two flowers last year. So I'm hoping they'll stick. But this one actually this tree actually was laying down during the storm. So we propped it back up wow. full of water and everything it's had to get well. in the water. And it's, it's back, thriving again, pushing out flowers. Wow. And yet another mummy. Another mummy. Yeah. What's that one? Uh that one's the Excalibur. It's holding fruit up on top. Yes. All right. Yeah, so this is a everywhere. blue java over here. Um, blue java. Blue java. And this is dwarf Orinoco. Looks like it's ready to be harvested. You want to harvest that? Yeah, we can if you want to try it. Well, I was thinking about harvesting that one. That well, one's got yellow, yellow on it. it. See it? That's the dwarf Brazilian. Yeah. This is gold finger. Um, this is the dwarf. It looks variegated too. Yeah, it almost looks like a Cavendish the way the leaves are, yeah. but it's it's. I bought it at like gold thing. Hopefully, it's not. We have Cavendish. all these bananas in the back here. Yeah. Bananas yeah. we have found Flower. make a great fence. Actually, we um, we've had a lot more back here, but we've recently been harvesting. We just keep getting rack after rack after rack, but um, in the summer especially, it provides a lot of privacy, which is nice. Yeah. This is an Abbey. Abbey, we have other ones. Another Abbey. You is that from your old house? Uh, this one, where did I get this one? <laughs> Can't remember where this, I got this one. Uh, I believe so, yeah. This was in the other house, too. Wow. And this is our new Abbey. I planted another wow. one. <laughs> yeah. This is three of four, I there think, was a, right? There's one more. There was a Ross Sapote here, and they don't do well in water. I guess it died. Yeah. Okay. So that was the third of the three trees that didn't make it. It was those two loquats and that one. Well, this uh, have you okay? We were trying to figure out what we wanted to plant here, and I was like, "Well, let's plant what we like." Yes. Yeah, it's our favorite. <laughs> um, this is Campong um, sugar apple. Yes, it's it's actually really good. Yeah, I have right. a one which I got fruit off for a long time. It's so good. But it's funny because. When I was sold this as campon, and then half of the tree is actually a green sugar apple. Interesting. Because it's below the, the graph graph union. union. Yeah. So it don't, it don't look like it, but it is. But this half of the tree, and it makes a wonderful green sugar apple. And I'm pretty picky about the green sugar oh, apple. That's good. That's one I'm going to propagate. Nice. Another jackfruit? Yeah, this is a seedling jackfruit okay. and this one was laying down <laughs> so it's actually propped up again made it and it's actually throwing out flowers very nice so it's, it's kind of small i cut i cut the tops like the middle branches to keep them try to keep them low i want to keep them about 12 foot to 14 foot if i can yes. i don't want them to get higher than that this fig's an excellent example of how resilient figs are so this plant has moved probably at least five times in the lifetime <laughs> that i know of it um, and then in this most recent storm, um, the flood kind of washed away all of the soil till its roots were exposed and it was laying down. So we propped it back up and cut it way down. It was long and lanky. We cut it way back. There was hardly any leaves left on it. Um, we planted the cuttings all around. There's one behind it you can see that's already popping up. And, and then yeah. you can see how lush it is. So this one's truly thriving. And I think we're really grateful that you we know decided to it cut it way back. Um, no, it's just, it's actually been passed down from family member to family member until they finally <laughs> landed here in a great space. All right, another mame back here. Yeah, this is a grafted, um, this one is a paste, actually. Another paste, excellent, yeah. excellent. I kind of got it, moved okay. it a little away from the other one. But it's doing well. It's got some flowers starting and stuff. Excellent. Uh, and uh, Sapodilla here, what kind is this? This is an Excalibur. This is the closest you're going to get to... Uh, butterscotch taste without buying a butterscotch. 
This is an amazing tree. It might even, we were talking, I was talking with Rob and Zane, and they say this might actually be a butterscotch because they, the Excalibur used to grow Zill's sure. trees. And it's got fruit on it. It's not ready yet, but some big fruit on here. Yeah. It's got some fruit here. So uh, I'm excited. This taste, this is amazing. I try to taste a lot of sapodils, but this one is like red flesh in, inside. It's it's beautiful. Great tasting. You want it? Nice. And last year it actually had more, but since the, since the storm, it was underwater. This was underwater at four wow. and a half. So, it's three but, or four days. Yeah, and it's thriving. Still, still pushing out new, you know, leaves and everything. Amazing tree. Wow. This is a cat, cat leaf guava, a lemon cat leaf guava. It's actually really, I'm, I'm surprised that most people don't grow this in Florida. It's real refreshing in the summertime. I mean, these things taste like lemon, you know. Super sweet and juicy. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's great. great. I think it's a great guava. We're in yeah. LA, I'm not trying to keep it down small. Are you have values that you have? Are they certain varieties? Or they only sell one variety out here? They're all seedlings? Well, mostly all seedlings. But I'm starting to graft them now, like on nice. the fruiting one onto seedlings. Nice. Yeah. And these are Cavendish bananas. This is a good banana. It's yeah, a common banana. Provides but this plenty is, of food. It's a, it's a great banana. That's a whole moa that's right there. Behind the ducks. <laughs> behind the ducks. That's our a, ducks. What kind of tree is that <laughs> behind you? This is a maple tree. A maple tree. We just recently learned that we can tap it. So we're going to have to try oh, to wow. figure out how to get some maple syrup down in Florida. I don't know if that's <laughs> possible. But. It's a beautiful tree, but it'll grow. It grows. You know, real wild. I had to cut a bunch of the branches over yeah. our chicken coops. Yeah, really big. Yeah. This is this is our. We have two chicken coops. This one's a tractor. We used to push it around the yard. But we just we pop some wheels down there onto the axles, and, we move and it then around. we can move it to wherever we need, wow. which is really nice. The chickens seem quite happy with it over here. They free range all day long, so we don't really need to move it around. But at times when we want to keep them in, we can move it over onto the grass for them. This is our rooster, Einstein. We call. <laughs> Yeah, the kids have really gotten into hatching chicks, so they like to hatch chicks and sell them. Um, they also collect their eggs and bring those to friends. And this is a longan. It's a beautiful tree. Yes. And we bought it pretty big, and we found it in the nursery real cheap, so I decided to buy it. It's no name, but it produces fruit, and it's wonderful tasting. Yeah. Wonderful tasting. It's another Huang Tong. This one's kind of stock fruit. Totally, totally opposite of the other one. This one hasn't flowered yet. <laughs> it's grafted and everything. Interesting. This is one of my rarer trees out here. This is a cherolata. Oh, I got a cherolata. Okay. Yeah, it's a cross between a cherimoya and a custard apple. How old's that one? This is about, uh, well, I bought it when it was about this size. It's, I've had it for about two years now. I'm going to graft it. I kind of put it in a strange spot, but I knew I was going to graft it anyways. I might move, have more of them around the, around the yard. It's supposed to be delicious. I never tried it. No. What do you got here? Is that a pomegranate? Or no? These are blueberries. We blueberries. Have a few blueberries. varieties of blueberries growing around here. And then we have yams that are growing up the tree from underground. Oh, wow. And uh, are these uh, mulberry berries or what are these? These are mulberries. Mulberry. This is the ever-bearing one. And yeah, it's got it's got some mulberries. It always does. And this is a Pakistani mulberry. Great, great one. Long fruit. We have a, a variety of passion fruit growing over here. We are trying to um, provide like as many varieties of passion fruit so that they will hopefully bring us fruit because I understand that you need varieties in order for them to cross pollinate. But you can see our strongest one is growing up this maple tree here. <laughs> it has not provided fruit yet, but it flowered all summer long. So hopefully wow. soon we'll get some fruit from that. Yeah. This is a wampy. Oh, you got a wampy. Nice. Nice. Patangatuba, nice. small one. This one's actually seeds from Portugal like three oh, wow. years, three oh. years ago. They grew up from seeds. This here is a sweetheart lychee. We actually, this is our very first ever air layer. Um, so the first thing we ever air layered, we were successful with, which was really exciting, and created that sweetheart lychee. At our house, we had a 16-foot tall lychee that was producing wow. fruit, and we, did, we didn't have the heart to dig it up at our other house, <laughs> so we just air layered and brought part of that tree. But it's, it's doing, doing well. well. I mean, 
the leaves will start pushing out new leaves and it'll look great again. But <laughs> okay. This is a uh, breadfruit. Breadfruit, looking nice. Yeah, yeah. we're trying to air layer it down there. Which Very nice. That yes. Really, really uh, during that cold freeze we had last year, it knocked it down a little bit, but it's thriving again. So it's got it's pretty big base on it. So. And here's uh, what is this? This is a quai muck. Quai muck, nice. It's a different variety than the one I have out front. I have a bigger one out front. Oh, you did it fruit yet? Not yet. Not yet. I can't wait to try it. <laughs> yeah. That's a breadfruit there. And what do you got here? This is a cecropia. Cecropia, nice. Cecropia, yeah. Cecropia. They also call it the gummy worm fruit. Yep. Um, it's delicious. So we actually first planted this in front of our house before we realized that the root structure is very invasive. So we yes. dug it up from the front of the house because that would have destroyed our foundation and moved it here. And it loves this water. So. Well, this was underwater water. during the storm for wow. like two days. So it knocked all the leaves off of it. Yeah. But it's starting to come back. We tried to air layer it, but it's kind of dying back. And you can see new leaves on it. Very anyway. okay, nice. And you have another, is that another maple? Or what is that? Yeah, this is another maple. This is a maple. Okay. Passion fruit maple. <laughs> a small cherry of the Rio Grande. I'll show you the Rio Grande right here, a small one. Okay. This is a mame. Mame, what kind of mame is that? This is a seedling. I'll tell you the story when we see the other mame. Okay. It's a seedling mame. Uh, I started planting garcinias along this this way. This is Achacharu. Achacharu, yeah. Uh, this is a um, Cuban mango skein. Okay. Which is actually threatened in Cuba and only grows in Cuba. So that's kind of a neat one to have. This one's worth talking about. A lot of people buy those money trees that they braid up and maybe yeah. keep them in a little pod in the office. But it actually, um, if it's able to thrive, will produce a nut. And the nut is absolutely delicious. So we're looking forward to this getting bigger and, and feeding us with nuts. Nice. Yeah. This is another atacharu. Wow. <laughs> it's almost fruiting size. I, I'm, Praying that it's going to fruit, you know. Very in, nice. Here, right? Nice size. Potoma. Everybody should have a potoma. This is an amazing fruit. You know? Yes. It, it tastes so wonderful. I just cannot believe people don't grow this tree more. Yeah. It's wonderful fruit. And this was, I say, this is a Sabra, but I saved this from uh, a guy that was growing it that was neglected. It had all likings all over this you know, the stems and everything, you still see some of it. But then I planted it in the ground, gave it some fertilizer, and now it's pushing out flushes, you know. It's probably 10 years old, believe it or not, but it was wow. in a bad spot. And it needs shade and dark shade and everything. But bringing it back, see if it'll fruit. It's not, well, you know. This is uh, Garcinia Livestonii. It's from Africa makes like a nice, wonderful fruit. It hasn't fruited yet. You need a male and a female, so I grew some next one. Well, I see you have a fence at the bottom. <laughs> What's that for? For the chickens. For the chickens, okay. Our if chickens. you don't put that there, they'll tear everything up. Okay. Yeah. We That's finally why we have put the fence, this fence here, actually, because they love to come in the nursery and figure out what's in the pots. So we put up this fence and that helps keep them out. Yeah, so they say like, um, the female trees have rounded leaves and then the males are, are pointy. So these look pointy. And then I have a bigger one out front. I think Garcinias are going to be the thing in the future if we're growing in Florida, I think. This is a big uh, Batanga tuba. This is a Batanga tuba. If you see the difference, you see how it looks shinier? Yeah. This one's from Portugal, and this one's from uh, actually uh, Homestead, but I don't know where they got it. So this one makes a fruit that's huge, and this one's a smaller fruit. And this is a lemon drop mangosteen. Another okay. Garcinia. Patanga tuba again. And this is a uh, Eugenia ligastrina. This is a, uh, um, I think it is, I mean, that's what I bought it as, but then I'm thinking it's different because usually Eugenia ligastrina produces more fruit, and this one only produces maybe five or what six. What kind of fruit will that produce? It's a little red uh, fruit, not much to talk about, but it's a, a rare tree. I like to grow. Sure. Yeah. So this is the, your yeah. nursery area. That was all your trees in the ground. That's so right. you said you have a nursery license. So do you sell trees as well? We do. Yep. This is the Loxahatchery, and it's meant to be your food forest nursery so that 
people can do the same thing that we're doing here at our yard is growing food to be able to eat. So we've um, just recently started opening up, but by appointment only. Sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And I'll put your website uh, and contact information below the video. That'd be great. Thank you. Great, great. Okay, so what do you have here in the nursery? Uh, a little bit of everything. Kinda, this is the uh, blue Toro. You can eat the leaves and the comb on the bottom. Just have to cook them. Cook it, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a hog plum. Hog it's plum. red fruit. Oh. I noticed you don't have good. one in the ground. Why not? Because they're huge. <laughs> they're huge trees. <laughs> Same reason I don't have a, a java plum. This is a java plum yeah. in the ground. Huge trees. This is Eugenia uh, Sibicata. A lot of people grow on this now, I noticed, but I had this for a long time. Produce a lot of flowers, you know. Um, a lot of this stuff, no one's really growing. This is a uh, Eugenia, uh, it's a rainforest plum. Um, it's kind of a rare one in Florida too. Canalina, I was trying to think of a name. Here's more of the yucca too, so you can see we also oh, nice. start them in pots so that people can also bring them home and grow them. And this is another rare one. This is uh, Eugenia. I grow a lot of Eugenias too. <laughs> this is good, uh, Eugenia, Florida, but it doesn't grow in Florida either. So, but it produces like a purple um, fruit. It's supposed to be pretty good. This one's for Portugal too. I bought it like three years ago at sea. Wow. This is more of the Livestoniae, the Garcinia. This is Imbi. Got some nice ones growing. And, oh, there's uh, a variegated yucca back there. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, it's pretty. And this is chaya. So I'm trying to grow a chaya. I think everybody should grow chaya. Yeah, just to, amazing. So this is uh, the small leaf. Okay. This one's the medium leaf variety. And this is the big leaf. So I'm growing three different kinds. This is edible hibiscus right here. It's kind of mutual address in your mouth and eat it. I'm, I'm, it's all right. <laughs> But this one you can eat raw, whereas the chaya you have to make sure you cook to eat it. And, um, you can eat that one raw. Which one is yep, that? Yeah, this is the edible hibiscus leaf. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Good. I'm not going to grow. I'm not going to stock many mangoes here because everybody else does it everywhere, and I don't think I need to vet the yes. wheel again and keep. You know, so um, I grow some that we that I have here, like cotton candy, and this is uh, lemon meringue. I have a little lemon, lemon meringue. This one's new. I just did this one, the fruit punch. Yes. Cotton candy is not taken yet, and some other ones. Lemon meringue again, fruit punch. So we do our own grafting. And this, Very nice. This yeah. is some big trees. Uh, this is uh, Plinia edulis, which is Cambuca. It's similar to Dakota powder, makes a big, big fruit on it. Amazing tree. I grew all these from seed. These are like three, four years old. Loquat. This, this is the Christmas one that died that was over there. Uh, Brainerton, Oliver. This is a fruiting, two fruiting uh, cherry of the Rio Grande. Wonderful tree. This one's one. These two are one. I'm, not, I'm probably won't even sell them. Jujube. Jujube, nice. Yeah. This one, this one's fr holding fruit, a lot of it. This one has some fruit on it. And this is a different jujube. These are these are Thai jujubes, and I believe this is Indian. Indian. So this one has more uh, thorns on it. So, I see I'm, a bunch of my maize here. Oh yeah. These are all from seeds. Uh yeah, mostly yeah. All these are from seeds. The, the the trees that you see that are taller here are from Excalibur, and at Excalibur Nursery they grow through a maize all together. So I'm thinking. Maybe they hybridized, and maybe I'll have a new, new kind of variety here. But they stopped selling their fruit with seeds in it. So these are really, really old uh, um, ones from Excalibur. So I'm excited about them. Some of them have really huge leaves. Some of them have small leaves on it. You know, it's going to take a couple more years to produce uh, flowers and stuff, but it's not hurting me. Yeah. Um, this is elderberry. Yep, elderberry. Elderberry. So I'm going to probably use those for uh, rootstocks. Got you. Um, this is all rare uh, Chibota Cabras, <laughs> except for this and this. Well, that's a Chibota Cabra, but I'm putting this out in the sun because I think you got a new lot. I'm trying to see if it'll come back, but I doubt it. I don't know. Brogdon, avocado. 
And I'm not going to grow avocados. I mean, sell that many avocados here. Either. Everybody does avocados. Um, this is this is a uh, hashtinga, kibotakaba. Kind of a different kind of leaves. This is the same hashtinga, but it's a weeping one. But it, I don't know why it's weeping. <laughs> this is a different Pretty one. Though. Yeah. This is a, a hybrid between a white jabotacaba and petrantha. Very, very rare in Florida. See how different it looks? Oh, wow. Like where this from see. This one uh, uh, is considered Coste white jabotacaba from Hawaii. Like where this one from see. Very pretty tree. It's got wavy leaves and everything. I think these, these were sold as um, Coste uh, to the but I think they're ESA. So you're the job Jabo man if people want them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I think there's a flower on them. Is it? Maybe Anybody you got here? Uh, these are all um, sapodillas, small ones. Southwood. Sapodillas right here, a bunch of small sapodillas. Some and I'm growing rootstock. Um, this is all black sapote right here. Okay. Different varieties or the same? No, variety? these are all seed grown. Okay. Black sapote is excellent freeze dried. I have some for you. Oh, and really? I want yeah, you. I want you to try it because it's a totally you. different texture. It's it tastes like a brownie, like a yeah. vegetarian brownie or something. This is another yellow jabotacaba. The the leaves, the new flushes, are uh, fuzzy. They feel kind of cool. Right. Uh, cranberry hibiscus. This is kind of going to be our edible, we've got longevity, um, edible greens area, yeah. Okinawa, Sisu. These are strawberry, strawberry guavas. Strawberry guavas. Um, this, these are all I have to use here. These are the ones I'll be grafting. I already did one graft. It looks like it took too. I'm kind of excited about it. One branch from, broke off. Is that from your tree? Oh, yeah, off the tree anyway. Lame Americana. That's a cool tree. Um, th this is a soursop that we, it's actually at our friend's house. It was a seedling, but it's self pollinating and it was really good. So we're, we're going to name this one because we're growing out. I just grafted it on. I have a self pollinating seedling that's amazing and it goes crazy all year and you're welcome uh, to come graft it. Oh, oh awesome. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. It's really amazing. That's great. This is um, Myrcianus pungens. <laughs> it makes like a Jabota Cabra tasting fruit on it. This is a Pacific Fuji. Not many people have this. I got this from Zane. He gave it to me. Wow. It's kind of really rare, too. Uh, bay Cedar rum. I mean, Bay Cedar uh, cherry. It's a Eugenia. Kind of rare. This is Ginberry. It's kind of cool. It makes like a little small berry that tastes like gin. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is uh, blue jabota kind of different than the regular jabota Um This is related to the jackfruit, the kucha. I think they call it uh, monkey jack, maybe? And some cinnamon apples, those are really delicious oh, too. Oh, that's my favorite. Um, these, are, these are all grimble. Small Grimmels, the Bodacabas. This is a mulberry, Tice mulberry. I just got them going. I'm excited about this one. This is a native um, cocoa plum, but this one produces a fruit that's three to four times bigger than the normal one. Wow. I found plants in the wild uh, maybe three times. So I decided I'm going to grow this one because it's really interesting. Real interesting. I see some moringa over there. Moringa, yeah. That's nice. We have a moringa patch growing out there too by the canal. It's doing pretty well. This is a uh, Eugenia, same as the uh, Suriname cherry, but this one grows in the south of Brazil. It's maybe considered a, a new species. If you look at this and you look at the Suriname next to it, it's different. This is cold hardy. It makes a different fruit. These are small cambucas. You can see we should hurry. Just because the rain, we want to get everything here. So. Yeah. This, this is uh, all miracle fruit. 
Oh, nice. All these miracle fruits. These are, I grew all these from seed. They're actually flowering, too. Like this one is. Wow. All these miracle fruits. Great. And this this is all rare Jabota Cabos. <laughs> wow. This, this is, is the place to go. Yeah, this is um, the scarlet ones over here. There's some Merciana Guacuquea. Uh, oh, was. <laughs> yeah, well, we didn't get that. So. <laughs> this is amazing. Coronata, this one is different. I'm just showing you the different ones. This is a white. Look at the leaves on this one. White Jabota Cabo. Leaves that big. Wow. It's huge. Um, Otto Anderson. This is the rare one. No, just joking. That's an right. Everglades tomato. <laughs> <laughs> out of the pot. <laughs> um, this one's a Novak Petrantha. Kind of a rare one. Nice. It's, I won't go through all of them, but some of them are, this is kind of different, so you can see the different leaves on this. Obligata. Yeah, yeah they look different. Um, this one's from uh, Asia. Plenia Rosa. Look at the kind of different than all of them. Um, let's see what else. This is interesting. This is Eugenia Observa, but I'm kind of excited because it's this small and it's starting to flower. So I think this one might be um, well suited for Florida. That small flower is really good. These are, this is um, Grandma Chama, small one. Uh, Potomba, some Eugenia, some get over there. And this is a Grandma Chama, but this is a dwarf Grandma Chama. See the leaves? Wow. It's actually a different species. Uh, these are Garcinias, all different kinds of Garcinias. Um, this is um, Plinia inflata. This is a, a giant mulchi. It's a rare fruit tree. Um, these are loose Garcinias, Mexican Garcinias. Um, Spanish limes. These are jackfruits that are seedlings that I'm grafting. And I'm just gonna make it around the other side. You wanna take a break out of out of the rain? Or? No, no, no. I wanna finish before it comes out of the <laughs> So I got some native stuff. This is um, sea grapes and some native uh, coffee. Uh, this is cacao. Oh wow, okay. Got the it's, toilet paper tree back there. Yeah, toilet paper tree. <laughs> And wing beans, they grow all along the fence there. Have you tried oh, wing nice. beans? No. Oh, we'll have to get you some. Oh, yeah, they're business. delicious. That one's too big looks, to eat. No, I just wanted to show oh, how crazy one. it looks when oh, wow. it gets bigger. Actually, it's got a frog on it. See it? Wow. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll find you over here on the side. There's some smaller ones. They're better when they're What's small. What's here in the park? This is a big blue Jabota Kaba. Wow. I planted uh, my Asian sugar apple. They, they produce flowers and everything, some fruit on them. Turmeric. Um, custard apple, I planted another custard apple. What kind of custard apple is that? It's a seedling that I got from a um, closing nursery that was around here. Nice. This is peanut butter fruit. I have tons of them. A bunch of peanut butter fruit. Did you get these from your tree or from Yeah, this is all grown from seeds in my tree. And they started flowering too. Wow. So Here's there's a, a bunch delicious of delicious wing bean. You'll have to try that. You eat just is the beans inside? Yeah, it's the whole no, thing. You eat the whole thing. thing. It's delicious. That's a little bit, it's a little bit bigger. Is it soft? Yeah, it's very good. Very wow. Very good. You want some more? No, they're pretty cool. Yeah. And these grow all year long. We don't do anything with them. No maintenance. They just keep coming right. back and coming back and coming back. So and you always have we a love food those. Source. Yeah. So and you can eat the leaves too. They're delicious. Oh, really? Can yeah, you? the leaves, the tendrils. That's the, that's this. The, what wing, I call wing, wing bean. bean. Wing bean. Yeah. So all of the. Uh, butter, butter, peanut butter fruit are uh, from seed. They don't graft them. They're from seed, right? Yeah, these are all from seed. Okay. And uh, what do we have here? More dabbles? This is Grimmel. Grimmel. Um, this is a weird one, Sabra, but it doesn't doesn't uh, act like a Sabra. These are a blackberry jam fruit. I grew from seed. They're huge. Um, these are all red Jabota Cabas. Some big ones. Cherimoya I'm growing. The ones I sold were bigger than those. Oh, nice. yeah. Yeah. Nice. nice. Uh, there's a big, uh, this is a scarlet. Some bigger scarlet. Oh, wow. Uh, nice. Anyone looking for Jabos, this is the place to go. What are these here? These are canistels. I grew from seed. I grow a lot of stuff and keep seeds. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is uh, a Nona Montana. Uh, Mountain, mountain salt, good grafting. It's actually supposed to be better for you to 
use, use it as a medicinal. The leaves, yep. Yeah, so it's a good one. Um, Garcinias, the Cuban Garcinias. This is the, my purple I'm going to be planting in the ground. Uh, star Nico, apple. Yep, star apple. These are from our other house, the Air Layer um, Sweetheart Leachies. Soursop. Wow, look at that. All these soursop seasons. Wow. Yeah, that's a bunch of them. Um, Barbados cherries. I have all bananas along the hole. All, all my different varieties of bananas. This, this is uh, all sh Asian sugar apples. So you don't have any custard apple seedlings going yet. What? Custard apple seedlings? Seedlings? Uh, I have an interesting one over there. It's, it's black. I found it at um, um, a market down in Homestead that was completely black custard apples. So I grow all the seeds out. It's amazing. Wow. It was tastes like yogurt. I thought it was a llama, but it, I think it was a custard apple. Where are those? They're in uh, small pots? They're in small pots. I think we missed this whole area too. Oh yeah, let's go do it. Um, this is a uh, cherry of the Rio Grande, the Tanga Tuba. This is a variety of, of uh, cherry of the Rio Grande called Ben's Buttes. It's pretty good. Yellow Jabota Um This is Eugenia Calicina. It looks just like cherry of the Rio Grande, similar, very similar. How many people have that? Um, Shampoo ginger. gingers. <laughs> and I grafted some Pakistani uh, mulberries right here. Moringa. Moringa. Rose apples. Um, this is a kind of a strange uh, um, pla pla um, passion, fruit. passion fruit from Hawaii. Kind of growing. It's supposed to be really sweet. Um, caterpillar recently took down all I like the caterpillar. Oh, this is your favorite. Typical. This is your favorite fruit. You know what that is? What? Durian. Durian. Wow, I got durian. <laughs> There's three of them actually. <laughs> wow. This small. Yeah. Ten more years. Yeah. These are all red. But, uh, this is that. This is that black. I named it as black a llama, but it's, I think it's busted out. Throwing all these out bigger. Amazing. Let me know when they get bigger. I want one. That's one I think is worth growing. Yeah. Let me know. Uh, yeah. This is Blindy. I saw food on it. The health benefits of eating blimby, blimby is pretty amazing too. I don't know if you read about it. But there's blimby's one. There's one on there if you high. want it. It's it's really sour. Is it blimby on there? I like yeah. them. There's They're super there. high in vitamin C. They're fantastic for juicing. One of my favorites is to juice a couple of those in with um, some ginger straight up from the ground, and you won't get sick if you drink that, or if you feel like you're getting sick and you drink a little of that with some apple cider vinegar and water, you will not end up getting wow. sick. Yeah. And I like drinking They're it amazing. with water, dilute it, and just. It up. It really oh yeah, wild. or juice it and put it in with a Lacroix. That's amazing too. <laughs> really great Here's a rare um, Anona. It's Salzmanii. Very rare. Very rare. I'm growing them back over here in the shaded areas. Right. So this nursery, everybody, is one you want to come to. It's by appointment only, but I'll put their website below and then have their contact information so you can come in and check them out of all these uh, amazing things that they have, unique things. This is, uh, you definitely want to check this nursery out. And then they got some more trees still on the ground. What's that a mango here, what's that? That's the other sapling I got from my Julie mate. This yeah, one's right. robust, <laughs> it's, it's, it wants to grow. So I'm gonna see if it, it produces a good mango. Maybe I'll keep it, maybe I won't, I don't know. I haven't got that far yet. Okay, there's a fig there. This is a lemon meringue, lemon amazing meringue. fruit. I don't know. We only had one fruit off this tree, but wow. I can, <laughs> I can tell you like, you know, being in Florida, eating mangoes my whole life, that is a mango to keep or buy. I'm telling you, it's delicious. Lemon meringue. All right, and this is the other front of the yard. And uh, we looked at the island. What was that over there? What was that straight over there? Uh, we didn't go over there yet. Oh, okay. We That's, looked at side of this island here. Okay. Yep, so yeah, this bulimbi produced so much fruit for us this year. It was remarkable. We actually even tried freeze dried bulimbi. That was amazing. It was wow. like eating, it was like a kid's candy, Sour Patch Kids or something. It was pretty remarkable.
This guava we got it at Lowe's, I believe. Yeah. And it was supposed to be what? Peruvian, 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 guava. Peruvian guava. But it produces real dark red, huge guavas that are like this big. Amazing. So this one we're propagating to sell to other people. I think it's nice. amazing. It's got fruit on it again now. It's starting. So. It's like ever bearing this one. It's remarkable. It provides a lot of food. But it grows really big, I can tell us. <laughs> We have longevity spinach as a ground cover over here between the longevity, the sisu, and the um, African potato mint. Those are our main ground covers in this area. Yeah. This is katook. Yeah, I love katook. It actually has some berries on it. I mean, some seeds on it. Um, What's that? That's, that's the bulimbi. This bulimbi produced so much fruit for us this year. Yeah, it's a wonderful tree. Another mame? Yeah, this is another one of those. Uh, Seedlings I got from Excalibur there. Yeah, you can see all the berries on the katuk back there. Have you eaten the berries yeah. before? Yes. The yeah. berries are delicious. Yeah. This is a blackberry jam fruit. It's kind of interesting. This is my like bigger, big... bigger Kwai Muk. So I got a couple more years on it. Kwai Muk. Nice. Another Mame. Another Mame. I just plucked all the seeds. Sure. <laughs> Uh, this is that rare Garcinia I found a huge tree. Probably the rarest tree in Florida, I would say. One of them. Cuban mangosteen. It makes like a yellow fruit. It's very sweet. It tastes like lemonade. It's really good. No, not this one. No. This is different. Um, this is the living stony eye. The ones that I planted down there, I planted one in the sure. front. Big, big one here. It's got, it had some buds all through it. I'm hoping this is a female. Needs a male. And when you moved here a year ago, there was nothing here. <laughs> nothing. Wow. Just those big trees like this Royal Fine Sienna and, um, you know, the maples, the cypress, those were all here, but no fruit trees. What's that here? This is my our day avocado <laughs> that we had for <laughs> days years, and days. days and years and years <laughs> from the other house. This house. So now we finally got its last location. Yeah, now it has room to right grow. Right in the corner. Yeah, moringa likes bad soil. <laughs> you could grow a moringa in, in sand and probably thrive. I think. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So we just keep taking pieces off and sticking them in the ground, and we're gonna make a big. Moringa area over here because it's just so full of nutrients. I mean, well, it's a tree yeah. of life for yeah. so many reasons, it's right? But it's so great. Mm -hmm. So we want to fill this whole area up with moringa. Uh, this is uh, our newest avocado, Donnie. This is a Donnie. It's a little bonsai version right now. Yeah, there's got a bunch of Everglades tomatoes. They grow all over the place. Though. Yeah, if you want to grow tomatoes in Florida year round, these are definitely the tomatoes to grow. They're absolutely delicious and they don't require any maintenance. I don't think they even have any pests and they just keep reproducing. They're fantastic. Yeah, amazing. Um, this is all potato mint on this side, mostly and longevity on that side. So the ground cover. I'm trying to keep a lot of, a lot of the. What's this one? It's true. This is a cat leaf, uh, lemon cat leaf guava. It's another black. Jam fruit. Blackberry jam. And this tree is the powder puff tree, which is an excellent nitrogen fixer, but definitely difficult to keep trimmed Managed. back. We're worried a little about the power line, so we keep on hacking away at it. But the good thing is, is every time you hack away at it, it releases nitrogen in the ground. So we have found that this soil here is incredibly rich. And it's a great pollinator. The bees, when this has flowers and there isn't rain, the tree is actually buzzing with bees. It's pretty remarkable. Wow. And right now it's actually shading that back, which is helping the trees to get more established. And then I might just cut it down and plant something else. But right for now, we're keeping it. You see Very how many nice. birds on here? Yeah. Very nice. Um, coffee. Tons of longevity spinach growing here. All right, everybody, I told them they had some amazing things there. Really exotic, hard to find things as well. This is the Jabo family. They love their Jabo coppers, and uh, you can tell they're propagating a lot of them for the future. If you're into collecting Jabo coppers and other exotic fruits, this is definitely a place you want to check out. Their link is below the video. 
I'm so excited about their collection, and I know I'll be getting some here in the future as well. So until then, everybody, put your comments and questions below, and keep growing.